I'm Karen Kopp and we're talking about the five planks of door opening success. If you want to close more sales, you're going to need to meet more prospects. It's that simple. Did you ever wonder why, despite your best efforts, you're not getting the meetings that you really want with prospects? Or maybe you're not getting all the meetings you really want. Or maybe you're getting meetings, but they're not with the people that you want. How frustrating is that? If you're not getting all the meetings you feel you deserve, there's likely a problem in one or more of five key planks of door opening success. Today we're going to talk about what those planks are and I'm going to tell you what our door openers do to land the important meetings for our clients. What do you do? What do you avoid in order to get the optimal results for time spent prospecting? Plank number one is target. Here's the most common error, targeting too wide. If you're targeting everyone, you're actually targeting no one. What can you do? to reduce the universe of prospects so that you could focus on only those who are more likely to say yes to sooner to the meeting and yes sooner to the sale. So there are filters like size of company, level of decision maker, geography, industry niche, and that list goes on. But there are three additional filters that we use in order to narrow the playing field down to get to those people who will say yes sooner. Those three include, and here's the Venn diagram if you remember that from fifth grade, willingly pay. Which prospect groups will willingly pay what you want to charge for your products and services? Some buyers are just going to buy on price. So how much more efficient would you be if you didn't even talk to them when you're prospecting, but only spoke to the people who are more likely to pay what you want to charge? Obvious solution is the next one. For which groups of prospects are you the obvious solution? They would never take a step without you included once they know you exist. And the last one is urgency. Which groups of prospects are going to feel more urgency around taking that meeting with you and then taking the next steps to make a decision? There are some prospects out there who are not going to make decisions in the time frame that you are going to find acceptable. What if you didn't include those in your prospecting? Find out what factors create urgency and focus on those prospects. And when you have these three factors, you are going to be focused on your sweet spot. Here's something to remember. Just because your current clients are your current clients does not mean that they are your best prospects, especially for those companies who have grown by referral. You may be able to sell bigger deals. You may be able to sell more profitable deals. So take a look at what's out there and don't necessarily replicate your current customers when you're deciding on your strategy for targeting. Plank two is message. The common error is that people think that the marketing message and the sales message are the same thing, but they're not. They're different. The marketing message is meant for the masses. It's what's in your advertising. It's what's on your website. It's your value proposition. It's meant for a general audience. The sales message, on the other hand, is meant for one person. It is the spoken word. It is the email for one person designed to move that person from one place in his or her thinking to the next. If your sales messaging is not doing that often enough for you, it's time to spend more time thinking about the words and the phrases that you're using. People spend lots of time figuring out why they're different. Here's my experience. It doesn't matter why you're different. The prospects actually don't care why you're different. They only care why you are of more value to them. If you can articulate that in words that are compelling, you will get the meeting sooner than other people who aren't doing that. The third plank is objection answers. And not just any objection answers, but the right objection answers. There are three Ps when it comes to objections. Pre-think, prepare, and practice. 
If you spend even three minutes thinking about what objections you'll face before you walk into a selling situation, you can come up with probably 90% of the objections that will come your way. And if you can pre-think what they are, you can also prepare the right answers. But that's not enough. You need to take it one step further than just having the answers. You need to be able to practice them so that you can use them conversationally in a performance moment. If your company does not have an objections manual that is shared with all the sellers on your team, I highly recommend it. You can go to our blog at copconsultingusa.com, K-O-P-P Consulting usa.com and download a one sheet that gives you all the steps of how to make that objections manual. Last point on objections. It's not always the objection you hear, which is the objection you're facing. It's important to be able to ask questions to pick out which objection it is so you make sure to use the right answer to get to the next step. Plank four, the right door opener. Many people know the difference between the hunters and the farmers. The farmers grow the business and the hunters find the business. Here's the common error. What many don't know is that within the world of hunter salespeople, there are different kinds of hunters. There are those who are great at going on the meetings and closing the sales. We, in our world, we call them the closers. There are others who are intuitively great, got it in their DNA, to open up new conversations with people they don't know, whether it's through cold calling, warm calling, networking, conferences, trade shows, they just have it in their DNA and they want to do this part of the job. We call them the openers. If you are a salesperson who's responsible for both opening and closing and you consider yourself a closer, it's probably hard for you to sit there and get the opening done. Here are a couple tips for you. Block time on your calendar to make sure that you're making room for opening and don't let anything else get in the way. Hammer away at that list of prospects. Don't mix the uh, new prospect work with the work of current clients or even prospects that are later in the funnel. There is a flow and a cadence to prospecting and you wanna make sure to protect that time. Another idea for you is to pair a great door opener with a great closer and watch the magic happen. The door opener will make sure that constantly there are new opportunities coming into the pipeline, give them to the closer and get them closed. So you see here we are on this chasm and uh, the bridge is almost all the way across, but there's one plank that's missing. So if somebody were to step on this bridge, it's going to fall in. You need all five planks in order to get optimal results, to get the doors open, and to get to those bags of cash. So here is the last plank that we need, which is the right execution. By right execution, I mean the right amount of time is spent by the right person doing the right activities. If you have time, let's say on a Friday, and you say, okay, Friday I have four hours and I'm going to make a bunch of prospect calls, I'm all excited to get that done, but then you get busy and you don't come back to that list again, you might as well not call them in the first place. So the very first piece is making sure that you're spending enough time. The next is making sure that enough time is spent doing the right activities. Here are a couple tips for you. Uh, voicemail, email in combination. Very important. Email alone is not going to do it. Voicemail alone is not going to do it. Email, voicemail, and combination. You cannot use the same message more than once. You must vary the message and deepen it over time. Don't try to get around the assistance. Enlist their support. They can be very helpful if you let them be. If you've tried several weeks or a couple of months to reach somebody, voicemail, email, your message is of value, not getting anywhere, you can send an email that says, uh, 
knowing how busy you are, I thought I would pick a time and see if this works for you. Please expect a calendar invite from me. If the time doesn't work, propose another. But you can't do that on the first try. That's after several attempts. Another uh, tip for you is uh, weekends, especially for the senior level decision makers. You can leave a voicemail email combo on a Sunday and ask the decision maker to give the assistant permission to put you on the calendar. 9 a.m. Monday, call the assistant and ask if he or she has received permission. And often that has happened. And that's a great way to get your meeting right on the calendar. Let's recap. So we know that strategy before execution is the right way to do this. Ready, aim, fire, not ready, fire, aim. Just because you have great information and great contacts does not mean that you're going to get the meeting unless you select the exact right prospects, have the exact spot on message, spot on answers for objections, have the right person doing the work, that right person is spending enough time on the right activities to make a difference, and then the doors open significantly easier. Five planks of door opening success. I'm Karen Kopp, Chief Door Opener of Kopp Consulting. We're best known for the door opener service where we get our clients in the door with their prospects and for sales messaging that gets the right doors open. We are so thrilled to be partners with Discover.org, the best data in the world, I could tell you, because we use it in our programs. Thank you for joining us for our whiteboard session today. If you have a particular question about door opening, Post your comment and your question. If you have a particular tip that you think everybody should know, post that here. Like it, share it, and join us for another whiteboard session.